<clears throat> Welcome back everyone to Universal Gravitation. Today we're doing part two of conceptual questions and we're doing another part of this because in the AP exam they love to have questions like this be on the multiple choice part of the exam. So I want to get I want to get you guys ready for the multiple choice part when it, especially when it comes to this chapter. So let's look at this. A planet has an escape speed of v. If another planet is the same size but has twice the mass its escape speed will be blank. So we want to know what the escape speed will be uh, when it's escaping from um, a, a planet that has twice the mass but the same size. One thing we should know right away is it's going to be harder to escape from this planet than it is from this planet. So that means the escape speed should be more than v, and it should be more than v over 2, more than v over 3. So it should either be a or it should be b. Do a quick recap about this whole escape speed thing. We should know that we're going to be using energy because we're going from one height to another height. And at the very beginning, we're going to have some gravitational potential energy and kinetic energy that we're lifting off with. But at the very end, we're going to infinity, so gravitational potential energy will be zero because infinity is the zero line. And we want, we're going to be reaching that infinity line barely, slowing down to a stop, so that's also going to be zero. So what we should know is this is going to be negative g, mass of planet, mass of spaceship, uh, divided by r plus one half m mass of uh, spaceship v squared. And this v is the escape speed. This is all equals zero. Uh, I could bring this to the other side so it becomes uh, positive and mass of satellite, cast uh, mass of spaceship cancels out. And we notice that if this uh, mass of the planet increases by a factor of two, um, maybe I should actually redraw this so this looks a little bit prettier. So let me put one side on the other side. So I'm bringing this UG to the other side, and we have one half mass times velocity escape squared is equal to G mass of planet mass R, the mass cancels out. But we see if the mass of the planet increases by a factor of two, this side of the equation increases by a factor of two. And if this side, that side of the equation increases by a factor of two, this also, so that means this velocity here since it's squared, it has to change by a factor of square root of 2 because it's squared. And then we get B as our final answer. Hope that made sense. We're going to be doing a few more of these, so if it doesn't, just keep, uh, keep paying attention. Okay, so let's look at this. A planet has an escape speed of V. If another planet has twice the size and twice the mass, its escape speed will be blank. Okay. So what we should be doing, same thing, the energy at the beginning equals the energy at the end. We have UG plus the kinetic energy. And whenever we have escape speed, everything over here just goes to zero. So we know that this is going to be negative. Oh, not negative. Uh, uh, I'm just going to put the UG to the other side. So this is going to be one half mass times velocity escape squared is equal to G mass times mass of planet over r. Uh, it becomes positive because we brought it to the other side. We see that the mass cancels out. And we're going to see that the mass of the planet increases by a factor of 2. But the radius of the planet also increases by a factor of 2. So we see that actually this side doesn't change at all, meaning this side doesn't change at all, meaning the velocity is going to stay the same, being c, just the same velocity. Okay, uh, moving on. So let's look at this. On the International Space Station, astronauts feel weightless. What is the reason for this? The astronaut is so far away from Earth that it does not experience a pull from gravity. B, the astronaut is a constant motion of falling. C, the astronaut is between Earth and the moon and is perfectly in equilibrium. D, the astronaut experienced an acceleration of zero. Okay, so we should have kind of learned from before that satellites are, they are pretty far from the Earth, but they ex still experience a significant acceleration. So it's not zero, and it's not A. We kind of learned this at the beginning of the chapter. So, but what we should know is this satellite here, as it's falling, there's a certain velocity, uh, the satellite is actually falling, and the person inside is also falling. And since they're falling at the same rate, it looks as if they're both floating. It's as if um, it's as if 
you're in an elevator and the elevator snaps. While the elevator snaps, you're both falling. So it's going to feel like you're f floating uh, until, of course, you start crashing down. But in this case, what's happening is the satellite is constantly falling and you're constantly falling. And that's why it seems that you're weightless. So B is the correct answer. Okay. And you should look that up. If you're interested in that, look that up. It's pretty interesting. Uh, let's look at this. To escape Earth's gravitation pull, it needs to be launched with an escape velocity of V escape. To escape Saturn that has a radius approximately 10 times that of Earth and a mass approximately 100 that times of, uh, that times of Earth, what escape velocity is required? Okay, so let's look again at the same thing. The energy at the beginning equals the energy at the end. And this goes to zero for escape velocity. So UG plus K equals zero. Bring this UG to the other side. One half mass of spaceship velocity escape squared is equal to G uh, mass of spaceship mass of planet divided by R. Mass of spaceship, as we can still see, cancels out. Uh, this mass of this planet, Saturn, is uh, what, 10 times that of Earth? Uh, no, the radius is 10 times. But the mass of the planet is 100 times. So what this is going to be telling us is that um, this side is going to be going up, or this side of the equation is increased by a factor of 10. Meaning, this side of the equation also has to increase by a factor of 10. And if velocity is squared, that means this velocity has to change by a factor of square root of 10. And what this is telling us is that the answer is going to be V, square root of 10 times the velocity escape. Okay? All right, so now let's look at this problem. A satellite of mass M orbits Earth that has a mass of capital M at a height above the Earth that is equal to the radius of the Earth, Re. What velocity should the satellite have in order to maintain its orbit? So what we should know is if it's orbiting like this and the height is staying the same like this, we're not going to be using energy. So we should be using Newton's laws to figure this out. So G, mass of satellite, mass of Earth, um, divided by R squared. So we're looking for the velocity. So let's change this force of gravity to be mv squared over r. So the mass changes. So the r is going to change. Uh, the, the mass of the satellite cancels out. And then we have v squared is equal to g, mass of Earth, which I guess is capital M, uh, divided by r. And we can see that this, uh, this satellite is a distance of 2r away. So that means that this is going to be 2r. And then if we want to get rid of this v, we're going to square root it, and we get velocity is equal to the square root of gm divided by 2r, or 2re. And then we see that c is our answer here. Okay? And that's pretty much it. I hope that made sense. I might have gone a bit quickly, but please look over and try them again if you were confused. Um, and next time, we're going to be talking about Kepler's laws. So I hope you're excited for that. Thanks for watching, everyone.